what's up guys? Joker here. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm coming back at you again with some more PC gaming hardware news. First up, we're going to be discussing someone who has undervolted their 5800X 3D, which recently launched and is an absolute monster at gaming. And he's managed to undervolt his CPU without losing any performance down to one volt, cutting his temperatures almost in half and significantly reducing the power draw. Also, AMD has sort of quietly released a new GPU in the form of the RX 6400, selling for around $160, and they are amply in stock. Also, Thermalright is releasing a bracket for Intel 12 series processors, which actually have an issue with bending and can cause some contact issues with coolers on the IHS on some of the hottest parts of the CPU. So we'll be jumping into all of that news. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's going to be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page, and it will update in a matter of seconds, or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. First up though, let's talk about the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. As I mentioned at the start, this CPU launched recently last week and there was a bunch of reviews that came online. Sadly, I wasn't sampled one of these, but that's okay. Um, the reviews are fairly conclusive though. This thing is a beast and it pretty much stomps Intel's 12 series when it comes to gaming performance. This thing is really tuned for gaming with things like its 3D cache and it's not a huge multi-threaded monster in terms of like rendering out videos and doing complex tasks like that. But for just pure gaming, this thing is going to be the golden child, I have a feeling, for years to come. And I'm sure it's going to become like one of those new CPUs that for, you know, for years now, people are getting from years from now, people are still going to be talking about it and still running these things and getting very good performance in terms of gaming. So even though it's already good right out of the box, uh, one of the limitations of it is that it is a locked processor, which I believe is like the first time we've seen this on a Ryzen CPU. So it doesn't have any overclocking capabilities built right into it. However, you can do things like undervolt it and certain motherboards will allow you to overclock it even though it's not officially supported through BCLK overclocking, which is a little bit more complex, a little bit more tweaking involved. But at the end of the day, certain motherboards, you will be able to overclock it. And some people have gotten these things running over five gigahertz. But for someone that's happy with the out of the box performance, but just maybe wants to get some cooler temperatures and better power draw, lower power draw, I should say, Sean over on WCCF Tech, known by as Diabolical Genius, has undervolted his down to one volt, which at stock, it's starting off at 1.35. So a pretty significant reduction there in terms of the voltage. And he was able to verify this using CPU-Z as well as Asus's dual intelligent software to verify that the voltage was in fact lower. And he also saw, uh, low, like I said, lower temperatures, lower power draw. Um, he was running at one, one volt and it was still doing 4.4 gigahertz all core. And the CPU peaked at 43 degrees Celsius in a Cinebench run whereas it was peaking at 80 degrees Celsius in the same exact benchmark when running at stock, and the power consumption 
was at 73 watts, and this brought it down to about 57 uh, with the reduced uh, voltage. So very impressive that he was able to do this. Good job to him. Uh, it is worth noting, as they do mention on here, that he was running a custom loop cooling kit with a 420 millimeter radiator. So even with that, though, at stock, it was hitting 80C in Cinebench. So this thing can certainly draw quite a bit of heat. So it would seem like even with a custom loop, undervolting might be a good idea. And you might not need to go as low as one volt at the end of the day. You really want to uh, try, try to keep it as stable as possible. And he might just have gotten lucky here and had a very golden sample. Maybe other people out there might not be able to get it as low as one volt. But that's why it's always advisable to undervolt or, or try to really tweak in the performance the best the best that you possibly can. Uh, I personally run a, run, run a 9900K, uh, which can easily do 5 gigahertz, but it gets quite toasty. And I found that I was able to run it at 4.8 all core. And I've been doing that for a few years now at, uh, I think it's 1.12 volts, I think it is, I want to say. Um, it's been a while since I looked at my settings. But... I run it at a, at a very low voltage compared to what it runs at stock or is what I'd have to run it at to overclock it and get it on five at 5 gigahertz or more all-core. I've actually even had this CPU up to 5.3 gigahertz, but it gets extremely hot even on my 360 millimeter radiator. Um, so yeah, I undervolt it and that's why I leave mine at 4.8. If you ever see any of my, my benchmarking videos, my 9900K is always at 4.8 just sitting right there because I chose to undervolt it rather than overclock it just for the stability. And honestly, this has been probably the most stable PC build that I have ever owned. Like, I can't remember ever really having any issues with it, uh, apart from when I had a hard drive die, which, and the PC wouldn't boot, which was kind of odd. The PC wouldn't boot at all. Uh, well, it would boot, but it wouldn't even get into the BIOS um, with a mechanical hard drive failure, which was kind of weird that it ended up being that. And I later on learned it was like something with Gigabyte motherboards and stuff like that at it's, it's fairly common, actually. So, yeah, good job, Sean, on undervolting that CPU. Hope you're enjoying your 5800X 3D. Next up, AMD has also sort of, like I said, sort of quietly launched this low-powered, sort of like low-end uh, GPU in the form of the RX 6400, which will obviously be slotted in below the 6500, which definitely met with the ire of many reviewers when it launched. Um, not really getting the most praise, honestly, so I'm not really expecting too much out of the RX 6400. The 6500 launched at around $200, but that was sort of when, you know, the GPU issues was still really, really bad in the market. So even the $200 card was being found online for $350, $400 for let's be honest, a pretty weak GPU in the ARC 64, uh, 6500, I should say. But prices are starting to get better, and you can readily find many cards available right now. The ARC 6400 is launching at an MSRP of $159, and it's a uh, pretty low power, power usage. And as far as the specs are concerned, um, on the cores, it's got 768 versus the 1024 of the 6500 XT. So you can expect it to run about 25 to 33% slower. And that is backed up by some of the initial benchmarks that we have seen coming in thus far. So those are available now. As I said, they seem to be plentifully in stock, and you can readily find them at that MSRP, uh, even a little bit below that. I found this Huangji RX. That's an RX 550. Sorry, so that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. <laughs> it's this one here, the ASRock Challengers. Okay, so MSRP, $159.99. I thought I, I had only searched for 6400, but for some reason, an RX 550 uh, showed up on here. So, yeah, fairly low power usage uh, GPU in the 6400. I guess it'll be good for very low end builds and people wanting to run like maybe like esports titles, stuff that's not too demanding, maybe 1080p or lower. Uh, so, yep, there you go. 6400 is available now. Next up, Thermalright has built an anti-bending plate for Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, which is kind of laughable that they actually need these things because the IHSs on them are bending when people put on the coolers. The main cause of this is that unlike previous generations of Intel's LGA CPUs, the LGA 1700 is a little bit w longer than it is wider or wider than it is longer, however you want to really look at it, I guess. So the problem comes is when people are putting on their coolers and sort of wrenching them down, uh, it creates some bending and then the middle part doesn't get a solid contact uh, with the copper plate of whatever cooler you happen to be putting on it. And obviously this is a problem as that is the hottest part of uh, the CPU underneath that IHS there. So Thermalright has essentially come out with this and uh, you can You'll be able to pick them up soon. I didn't get a price or anything on it, uh, but they said it can actually improve cooling performance 
by as much as six degrees Celsius. So not a tremendous uh, reduction. There are some other solutions out there that they mentioned on here, like using one millimeter washers or 3D printing your own bracket. But if you don't want to go through all of that and you want to get the most out of your uh, Intel 12th gen CPU and maybe reduce your temperatures and not damage the thing in the process, uh, you can, you'll be able to grab one of these thermal right brackets and uh, whack that bad boy on there. And they do mention that it doesn't come in just red. They mentioned gray and black as well, but only pictured here is the red one. Uh, and I honestly, I wouldn't mind grab If I had a 12th gen CPU from Intel, I'd probably grab one of these in black or gray and, and whack it on there. Just even if it's not like a tremendous difference in performance, uh, it's like one of those like little accessories that's probably not going to be too expensive, and I, I would throw it on there. Why the hell not, right? So that's all I've got for you guys today in the world of PC gaming hardware. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. No video tomorrow as I'm going to be uh, actually heading up to the city uh, for the Yankees game. They're going to be playing against the Cleveland Guardians, going there with a friend. So uh, going to have an awesome time, and I hope you guys have a great day as well, and I'll catch you next time for another video.